Good luck. Alright, so yeah, it's my fault that we had to reschedule this game slightly outside the normal tournament period. Um, this should still be a fun game to play, though. So, here we are playing uh, Third Foul Rook against Third Foul Rook. Normally, this game would have commenced within Shogi Teaching Ladder Week 58. I'm counting it there. Uh, regardless, this is a 15-minute with 60-second Byoyami game. So, I used to do this a lot. This Rook Fourth File strategy. Um, and it's a fine strategy, but the meta here is that third file is a hard counter to fourth file, at least if the diagonal, if this exchange doesn't happen, I know that, like, third file strikes slightly closer to where the king's going to want to sit than fourth file will when I tuck my king in this corner. That said... Um, I'm a bit fuzzy on what happens if I close the diagonal. It's supposed to be a calmer game. I know if I bring my rook over and we exchange bishops, they can drop a bishop here. Oh, but they could pin the rook, but then they take my pawn, and winning the rook's not so great. I think I want to try this calmer strategy where I close the diagonal. Even though I've not made enough time to study it just yet. Um, still going to play the rook to the third file, because it's still strong, but I want to be careful to just take the vanguard pawn and apply pressure, but not do anything too crazy. Okay. Um, I was going to say not exchange pawns here, because such a pawn exchange allows them to place a pawn and strengthen their castle. Whereas, just putting a general squeeze on the corner um, tends to be, I don't know, a more testing strategy here. This is interesting because it's saying I don't want to play Anaguma right now. While leaving open the option of playing the lance up and the king into the corner called Anaguma. So, I'm a bit fuzzy as to what my opponent's declaring here. Other than they've played twin gold, so... I mean, this could transpose to an Anaguma castle. I'm just going to play my king over. And it's possible we might be in for a ride if I also choose to tuck my king into the corner. Because they've already moved both golds forward. This limits the way their silvers can interact with their castle, or, I mean, it prevents the silver from moving up. Not that this was going to move up anyway. Okay. <laughs> so, the calm, sane thing to do would be tuck my king into the corner. The irrational, fun thing to do would be push this pawn, exchange, take this, they do something, take this, and hope that the outcome will be fun. I think we know which way I tend to lean on this. Um, I mean, two free pawns? How can I say no? But, um, it's not sane. Um, mm, on the other hand, I don't know how to attack this. Hmm. All right. Yeah, like, I don't feel like playing a calm game right now. So, I offer the option of exchanging these pawns. This move tends to make opponents nervous. 
Um, at a bare minimum, I think they'll bring up the silver to defend this. But I'm not sure what else they might try here. Yeah. In chess, putting pawns in this kind of tension um, with a diagonal capture would be asking for exchanges to happen. Players don't like... Players do not enjoy keeping tension unnecessarily in chess. Um, uh, in Shogi, keeping tension seems to be normal, I guess. You have to have a way to increase and decrease it. Alright, my opponent is gesturing at a quick attack if I just keep up my shenanigans, and I think I might. I think I might keep it up. I haven't yet committed to anything. Like, this is technically still flexible. I still haven't picked, am I doing Mino, or am I doing Anaguma? Um, yeah, so my opponent... All right, they're picking a quick attack. This quick attack's not slowing down. Uh, Mino's actually not that strong from the head, but Anaguma's weak on this point too. Um. Hmm. What am I supposed to do against this? I think I just take here and then drop another pawn and see what they do. I think that's reasonable. Because it definitely breaks their castle if I do that. And if they do dare to bring the knight forward, I think I've got this covered. Again, with the same tactic. So my rook supports a pawn that's directly attacking the head of their knight and king. And should the knight advance, it's still prone. Um... As I look at this, I was considering pushing the pawn. I think they drop a pawn on my rook's head, and I'm not so happy with that. So I have an in-between move here. We're going to attack the knight, and attack this pawn, which allows us to attack a knight. But also, this allows us to play this pawn advance on the next move. So our attack continues to accelerate. Um, but also we're trying to take the spawn out. Yeah, they could actually place a pawn on this file, and I could take it with the rook. Or I could take the knight. Yes, they defend this pawn, which is actually pretty scary. Um, well, no, yeah. If they push it again, I have to defend, and then they exchange. I have to bring up the silver, and then they could drop another silver. It's not trivial to defend. Um, if I take, they take somehow. I'm not sure what happens. So, um...
the, I guess what I need to do is just make sure I'm careful about what exchanges happen and when they happen. If everything happens in an orderly fashion, then I'm okay. If I allow absolute chaos, then I'm in some trouble. So Mino is generally used to defend against attacks from the edge, but I pushed my gold to the center. So this actually lands one move faster than I would like it to land. Um, if I take... Rook takes, pawn drop, they could sack the rook. I could take, bishop takes, I could take the knight. Um, they're taking here with the rook doesn't actually change anything. Well, no, it threatens to promote the rook. That's a threat. We exchange bishops, I drop somewhere. Uh, so yeah, if they take this... I won't have a pawn in hand. Um, so I'd kind of have to take the rook. And I could take the knight. And they'd have a bishop in hand to scare my rook around. I could move it over here. And then I could shut my rook off again. Uh, so all this is to say, probably what's going to happen is I take the knight, they take my pawn, I take back, they drop a pawn, I retreat my silver, and just wait for them to get another piece that can go right in front of my king, which is terrifying. But at least in the moment, I'm alive. Whereas if I allow this rook over onto 4-4, four, four, or 6-6, six, six, then... Um, I'm not sure what to do against that. Like if I allow rook 6-6, six, six, if I take the knight, they promote here. I move the gold over. This traps the dragon. They exchange bishops, but I instead take the dragon. So they have a horse that's moving around. Um, it's still not enjoyable. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. I wanted a wild game, I'm getting one. Hmm. I'm just going to take the knight, because I don't see how to improve this situation. Incidentally, now that I look at it, after they drop a pawn here again, and my silver retreats, technically I could drop a knight here. No, that doesn't help me. I just need to attack. Thankfully I have a target, but it's going to be defended by the silver. Yes, I made this complicated by moving my gold up. If I just left the gold back here, then I would have other ways. I, well, I'd be one move faster on this side of the board. So. I've tried to fix some minor overlay things, but I don't think this browser is centered properly. Um, see if I can fix that in the future. Okay. Uh, they offer a bishop exchange in this manner. Wait, that's not a bishop exchange. Uh, 
Um, I've, I'm not sure what to say. Uh, it would be a bishop exchange if, like, I took this pawn and the rook took back and could recapture. Um, but at present, they don't have this material in hand. Um, and I'm not interested in sacrifice or trading the bishop for rook here. Um, Normally, that'd be considered a material gain to exchange bishop for rook like this. Yeah, I'm sorry for them. Um, so... How do I attack here? The king is right here. I mean, I think this seems as clear as anything here. Um, right, so they would like to get a bishop back if they could. Um... Okay, so I could check with this bishop. They take, I take, king takes, rook, I take the rook. Uh, this gives them a bishop, but I get lots of material. Can I do better? Can I mate directly with a knight drop? I don't think so. Knight drops, silver up, knight takes, silver takes. Wait, no, if the silver up, I could take the silver. Knight drop, king retreats. I don't have anything quite there. Um, all right, we'll just check here. This seems to be awfully strong. So the point is that I want to make this exchange of a bishop and pawn for two pieces. This activates my rook and activates their king. So yeah, at this point, I'm still... Oh, okay. Thanks for the game. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out how to complete the final surround there. It's complicated and whatever. Uh, ooh. Yeah, that... Um, yeah, well... Him attacking over here, me attacking over here. That was something. You don't see that every game, that's for sure. Uh, it's true that by the end I was not quaking in my boots uh, because I got a bit fortunate to get a bishop, but... Um,
No, leading up to that point, I was... Uh... Yeah, so I'm trying to keep some flexibility in which castle I build. Um, but, uh, so they create correctly reacted to build a quick attack um, and I think my reaction was appropriate to build Mino but um, yeah yeah it was a good game um, I think they've studied a fair bit they understand some of the more advanced strategies you'll find available through like youtube lectures and such they seem to have studied that pretty hard it can be hard to spot tactics in the game sometimes in any time control i remember when i was playing chess back in uh junior high and high school it was a bit challenging to spot tactics um while the clock is ticking and the more you practice, the better you get at spotting tactics. But yeah, that was exciting. Um, so I'm actually curious where this conversation will lead, because I have some ideas. <laughs> um, yeah, that game was very fast-paced. Um, so I could ask them... I'm trying to think, like... I want to let them get some words out first, but also, uh, yeah. Ah, let's see. Uh, yeah, should we review and play another? I'm actually going to offer that because this this is a good game. Uh, yeah, they tried to play, um, yeah, Kikias and the Twin Gold Castle. There aren't a lot of resources. Yeah, they must have been <laughs> nice. Uh, okay, so we'll start by asking, uh, Queen Lies from the beginning. Sure. Yeah. So this is, uh, in general, good practice. Uh... Uh... <laughs> I know it's a bit nerve-wracking, like, oh, wait, I lost the game. Wait, I'm the one guiding the analysis? Like, I've been there. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I think closing the diagonal seemed reasonable enough. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is uh, indicating, yeah, either they play... Yeah. Uh, when was it that I decided that, hey, now would be a fun time to attack? Um... Yeah, maybe his suggestion is correct, strictly speaking. Um... Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> 
Yeah, it can be nerve-wracking playing uh, against um, folks that like know a lot. It can be really challenging if they out-theory you. Um... Yeah, the, this gold move here makes sense. So, um, yeah, I think each move on its own is fine. It's just, um, often I forget to develop, uh, my rook and or bishop. <laughs> so, yeah, I try to improve on that, but. But yeah, you gotta study a lot um, if you're remembering these moves but not sure um, um, uh, So I was thinking of building this thing or I put the knight out and I guess the bishop comes over here Hopefully I have that right I could be wrong um, you'd think eventually I'm going to get this right, but probably it'll take a while. <laughs> um, yeah, I was thinking of building that, and they're probably more accurate than I am here. Um... I guess my challenge is that, like, there's just too much for me to remember. Um, thankfully, I will be offloading one of my responsibilities for a few months. Um, got a presentation coming up, so once I've done the presentation, I can stop worrying about it. Uh, have I thought about putting the bishop where the knight goes? Uh... So yeah, um, so yeah, we're talking about this, um, yeah, so if we're building Ishida, like, this could be scary. Uh, so like these particular squares, um, can be defended by the knight. So that's kind of the idea of what makes Ishida such a strong shape, despite like you never see it anywhere else on the board except this one position. Um, that's why over here it actually is a strong shape and hard to fight off. But yeah, the bishop could be useful there, I suppose. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, it's an interesting idea. It's just, I've not seen it be so successful before. But, you never know.
Especially here, because, like, they played Twin Gold Castle. Uh, Kimuso. Which means it's kind of hard for my bishop to promote here. Or do anything useful in the center. So, it would make sense for the bishop to be elsewhere. Um, like, even dropping the bishop back, uh, Urashino style, might make sense. It's like dropping it through the back rank, through my center to attack the right side of the board, or maybe drop it in, uh, to 4-6 somehow might make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, this here, I could not resist this. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, okay, fine, you want it, we can, we can do this. Um... Yeah, this got sharp in a hurry. But I think it works out well for me. Uh, in particular, this point here. Um, um, I misspelled retreat. Yeah. Couldn't figure this out, but I was kind of sort of banking on them to not play this because they had not played it yet. So it's kind of an indication that uh, if they had like 30 moves to pick between, this might not be the one. Yeah. And this is where things get exciting. Um... I'm just so confused, because I would like to hit this point next to the king, but it's not easy to hit. Um, so my pushing this pawn is definitely me at flexing some muscle, but I don't know what to do next. I mean, potentially I might do this. I don't know. But, yeah, since I can't seem to strengthen my attack any... I think I have time to do this. Just because, like, their silver is still on 3-1. If the silver were up just a little bit more, um, that would... Even if it were up just one square more, I don't know that I would consider Anagumi here. Um... But since it's all the way on its back rank and their castle is completely split and demolished and such, 
It's, I don't know, anything's possible here. Um, I could be wrong. Yeah. Oh, I wonder if I could play Anaguma with one gold and just leave the other one on 6-9. So, yeah, supposing they do something like this. Um, guess something like this. Uh, how can I play this? I wonder. So this definitely loses a tempo on most, most things. But here, um, seems... I, I'm not seeing anything immediately wrong with it. Um, well, maybe I don't like this so much. Yeah, probably that's not playable. Probably I just have to take here. Um, so I think it. their attack is still a few moves away. Yeah, so this, sure. That's fine. Um, uh, okay. Yeah. Something like this. It's a lot of moves, but I need to do something against it. Uh, yeah, so... Hmm. Yeah, I don't really believe in this. I think usually you want to snipe at this guy here. Specifically that. Um, so, it's, that's usually the easier target, or so I hear, but I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. So, it's not easy. Because if you don't get a quick attack in, then once this is built, it's hard to break up. Yeah, so that's some ideas here. Yeah, I'm not sure how far back they want to go. Or if, like, they have other ideas to look at here, but... Um... um Yeah. 
Yeah, it's unfortunate this particular fork, uh, this thing didn't quite work out. If not, we might move on. I don't know. It's a sharp game, but um, I'm sure there were endgame things to review too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's unfortunate for sure. All right, but yeah, aside from commiseration there, I'm not really sure if there's something more to review there. Um, but yeah, we've erased the branch. Um, yeah, both of us did build up, yeah. This thing. Uh... So, not being able to retake with the silver makes this really difficult because, well, they saw in the game they had to bring the knight out. Um, and this just got more and more difficult. <laughs> um, yeah, so they do defend this pawn. Um... Ah. So if I'd found somewhere useful to put the knight, I probably would have just taken it right away. Um... But I couldn't find a good use for it. Yeah. So I'm just keeping this lined up. Um, <laughs> so, like, he's got both of these things to consider. Um, So something like this, I don't know. But it's slow. Uh, something over here. I don't know. Double swinging rook is much about who can checkmate faster. So it's more in my chess bug house 
I guess now we'll say Shogi Wheelhouse for me to see, like, hey, can I checkmate you before you checkmate me? Um, this sort of reading, where it's just very combinatoric, and, like, if I do this, he does that, I do this, he does that. It's a lot more linear, I guess. Um, whereas, yeah, combinatoric's the wrong word. Linear is the right word, where if I can force play, I can read deep without having to read wide. And this greatly increases the effectiveness of my search, because I panic when I try to read wide. Um, I do better at reading deeply if there's not many candidate moves. Yeah, it's... Uh, I would have liked to build a better castle against this. Uh... Yeah, so like, um, this is about speed, so like. Just me smashing here, you smashing there. There's really not much more to it. I have a suspicion who our spectator might be. Anyway, it's funny. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not sure. Like, this is the very, very broad outline of what this game is about. This is all about checkmating faster. Um... Uh, Yeah, I'm not sure that reading is going to solve this, uh, or reading study materials. I mean, what could you say? Like, you just attack. That's how you do it. Um, there's... I mean, I'm sure there are some strategies about which castles are more effective. Um... So like here, I played this. Um, So, yeah, this was not the best castle to play. 
against this kind of attack. Um, yeah, so around here, it's not the safest thing ever. Uh, well, I guess this is also part of the head. Yeah. Yeah, if I just uh, left this back here, I could have probably found time for this. So yeah, his advancing this Force me to do something about this pressure. Yeah. I don't know how one studies this. It just seems very fluid. Um, yeah. I guess the center pawn push has some merit. Oh, it prevents bishop 5-5 five five from happening later. That's merit, sure. Um, yeah, I'm actually kind of curious. Because at some point if they play that, I'm probably opening the diagonal, they might play pawn 5-5 five five to stop me. But then I might sack the pawn and exchange my work for bishop or something. There's a lot which is possible. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, let me think about this. <laughs> I mean, yeah, maybe. Um, so I guess, let's say I do this, right? This might be unwise for me to do. Um, so, oh, now I see what he's threatening. Uh, that's interesting. It didn't quite work the way he thought, because the pawn prevents the check. It, it did gain a tempo hitting my rook. Um, but it's not quite that simple. If you have a silver or a knight in the attack, that can greatly speed it up. Um, but here there is no such thing. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh. That's pretty funny. Alright. Uh, yeah. Uh, probably should have seen this. Um... Yeah, that's pretty strong. At least it looks strong. 
What do we do about it, I wonder? Yeah, this is sharp. This is some fighting shogi right here. So, we need to defend the... Oh, I'm dummy. Well, okay. Oops, uh, perhaps... <laughs> hmm... So I probably need to just, uh, yeah, retreat here. Um, even this is not so easy for me to defend against what looks like a very strong attack. Uh, yeah. I wonder just how strong this is. It looks really damn strong, but I don't know for sure. Uh, that's interesting. Um, Why is this not winning? <laughs> this felt like it should be very winning. But I don't see the winningness here. Um, I guess we try this. Uh... Hey, welcome. We are in hour two of analyzing this game. I'm joking, but um, yeah, it was a tricky game. So like one variation could just be retreating with threatening this kind of stuff. Not sure. Oh, yeah, I guess they could bring the king up to defend this. Yeah. Yeah, this looks hard to read. This looks so hard to read. Bringing the king up would not be my first choice, but, I mean, what options can I have here, honestly? But maybe it's good enough. And if it is, well, good enough is good enough. So, it's just a question of timing, which attack lands first. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Uh, uh, so you gotta study those checkmates, because in the actual game it can be kind of hard to find them. I am trying to vamp and continuing to try to vamp but how much can i speak about this game i don't know it's getting harder <laughs> uh yeah um so uh
guess we could try another game. I try something other than third file rook. Um, I don't know if he's going to specify an opening now that I've worded it this way, but I'm trying to keep it kind of open ended to indicate like, yeah, this is teaching letters fun. Yeah, let's give it a shot. I think this could be good. Cause like that first game, unfortunately, was decided by a piece draw. Oh, hang on. I missed a comment. Let me check it out. Oh yeah, they're standing by for rematch. Let me stand by for rematch and we'll do it. Plus one, here we go. Alright. Uh good luck. Alright, back to emotes only mode we go. <clears throat> We're gonna try something here. So they mentioned how they practiced or studied swinging rook against static rook. I'm curious what I can learn from this. Um, we might not gain rating points from this encounter, but we will gain knowledge points if we play things correctly. Um, Alright, so I'm going to force this bishop to move up to defend. Um, how do I play this? Alright, they've already committed the rook to the fourth file, so it would not be a crime for me to bring my silver out into the center. Just don't hang my bishop. <laughs> Let's try not to hang my bishop this game. Um, what do I think about this move? Not much. I actually kind of want to see if they can pull a successful attack with pressure on that flank. Kind of curious. Alright, so... Um... I've thoroughly confused myself by playing Orishino and Static Rook, and both of which I do not know. Um... Because I need to castle somewhere. And I think I brought the wrong silver out for this attack. This one could be used to defend my castle in the center. Hmm. Truly, we live in interesting times. All right, so... Yeah. I probably should rethink how I attack and how I defend. Um, we're going to make way for the bishop to dive under. Yeah, I've been expecting this for several moves here. Um, so, I'm still pretty unclear about where this goes next. Um, but okay. Let's build something. Don't know if this is playable. I hope it is. <sighs> yeah. Um, sure. Why not this? Alright, they've built Mino Castle. I'm going to react by not getting slaughtered on the edge, but I'll... Um, yeah. So now what do we do? This is the position we've been building up to. Wittingly or otherwise. Um, so... I want to put some pressure on this edge. Oh. He does have a point that I've not 
brought a silver out to do anything about this yet. I hadn't thought about it that way. But he does have a point there. Um, now he's... All right. We're going to bring my silver out. Defending this point, which really didn't need to be defended. But also closing this bishop diagonal so I don't lose my rook. Um, okay. I mean... This could transition to Diamond Mino, sure. Um, hmm. So, Yagura would be suitable if they were doing a different attack, which they're not doing. Um... I am so confused. By my own strange moves. Um, so silver does protect my knight from advancing to hit this. I've been considering bringing the knight out to force them to pick one square or the other for this silver, but they've picked this one already. Um, I think I should just build a high castle of some sort, really any sort. Um, and figure out how this tension's going to resolve eventually. Uh, this does entomb my bishop temporarily. Um, but I think this is ultimately a sensible place for the king, even though there are no generals right next to it. So next I can contemplate bringing the golds up uh, without blocking my bishop. So I'm playing slowly, but taking some space here. Uh, building a high castle while they figure out how they are going to attack. So they're intending to bring the rook over behind the lance. Um... Seeing this, I am undeterred. Okay. So I've like built Boat Castle, and now my king is going to go somewhere that's definitely not in the boat. Or it has gone out. The king has left the boat. Um, but as they attack on the edge... Um... I'm going to gambit this. It's possible this might be a straight-up gambit here. I'm not sure. I've not read similar positions just yet. Um, interesting. So they've been planning to bring the rook behind the lance... And now they're choosing not to put the rook behind the lance. Um, there's a certain non-consistency here. Hmm. 
Yes, yeah, so they could at this point put the rook behind the lance, but I could actually bring up a silver to defend this. Um, they're not taking my pawn. So lance takes silver, or lance takes something takes silver takes. I'm fine here. Um. Actually, I could pawn drop here, force them to pick something first. And then after their bishop has moved, then I could move up the silver. Pawn drop, if this bishop moves up, I could take silver takes. Uh, it doesn't gain anything. Just pride. So, if I bring up the silver... They could push this pawn past. Um, wait, I could push my rook pawn. Which complicates things for them. It doesn't significantly help me, but it doesn't hurt. Actually, if I pawn drop, the bishop has to retreat this way due to my rook pawn threat. See, I'm curious which way they go here. I mean, they have to go back which is unappealing because otherwise my rook breaks in before their pieces break in. Yeah, alternatively they do the sacrifice to guarantee that they are first. Um, it's like being the guy who writes first post in the forum. I mean, yeah, you definitely are first. Yep. There's no question who is first here. Um, so. The next point is that I want to activate my pieces. Yeah, now that's clever. You've definitely got some initiative here. So might as well use it. Oh, my rook was defended. I could have pushed this pawn, hitting their rook. I didn't think enough about that. Um... In part because I think I'm threatening so many other things here that I didn't stop to think about the um, like I've been thinking, can I drop my bishop somewhere? Um, or how is this pawn tension here going to resolve? Or should I sacrifice my knight for this promoted lance? Um, at least we know the answer to that one, is that if I were to sacrifice this, my boat is looking a bit fragile. So I don't really want to do that sack. So I want to do something faster than sacrificing the knight. So faster is probably me exchanging or otherwise getting this pawn out of the way so my rook can move. But I could also sack other things somehow. I don't know. Right, so they attack my knight, and we note how they are one move away from promoting. They could promote the rook, but it would be a sacrifice. So instead they move the rook closer without promoting it. 
so close, but unfortunately in Shogi, close does not count. That said, their initiative is still pretty good. I don't know if it's worth a bishop good, but it's still a good initiative. Um, actually, if I drop a bishop here... Where's the rook going next? So if it promotes, I take it. If the rook backs up, I could put a pawn in the way to block the rook. Um, So if the root goes back here, I drop a pawn, and then I can take this next. Um, uh, if I want to take that, I guess I do. I'm more interested in just blocking the rook from promoting than in pursuing this uh, promoted lance. So... Oh, I could offer a rook exchange, and they drop a rook on me. That would hurt a lot. Um, yeah, unfortunately, the materialistic move here seems to be the best move. So I need to stop the rook from promoting. And in order to stop this promotion, I have to attack it directly. And then once it retreats, I'm going to have to directly attack it again. And then taking the promoted lance, which is threatening my knight, seems to be the most stable move here, even though it's not particularly exciting. But yeah, promoting the this bishop on the other side of the board would have some benefit, but um, but then I don't think the bishop would be the most useful piece for quite a long time. Oh. Oh, I see. This is clever. Um. Unfortunately for them, I think I have a response to this. But this is definitely a challenging move. Huh. It's challenging because it's asking, where does my work belong? Oh. Wait, there's an answer to this question. It belongs here. Why here? Well, how their rook retreats and gets a pawn to the face. Um, so... Yeah, I'm not sure how to resolve that tension. I swear I wasn't planning this, but we'll take it. I've fallen to stuff like this before. Uh, but yeah... 
All I've been trying to do is prevent this work from promoting. It seems that I've succeeded in that aim. Okay, so this attacks my bishop. Um, oh, I can counter this directly too. Oh, I see. This indirectly protects their rook for a move. Interesting. So I've been saying the only thing I'm aiming for is to prevent their rook from promoting. Um, hmm. If I drop this, if they take that, if I pawn take, gives them a free move to do anything. Free move can be quite scary. Um, we're going to play this though because it looks interesting so yeah their rook escapes um, my rook is still not looking so hot either honestly Right, so my rook is still floating. Um, I guess we have to exchange here. Alright, so now they hit my silver with tempo. Yeah, and chess loose pieces drop off, and shogi it is so much worse than that. Um, oh, this is tricky. So I've taken a lance, I've got a rook in hand. I want to improve my piece activity, mm -hmm. but it's hard because my bishop gets trapped almost every line here. I think I just have to take the lance and try to get some kind of a two-for-one deal here. Um, so this token approaches my castle. Threatens my bishop indirectly. So we're going to try to rescue my bishop. And trying to rescue it, I just invited a fork. That's pretty terrible. See, so, you know, they just drop this in the corner and my bishop dies. They slightly missed the corner there. Very close, but not quite. Um, they do hit my knight at the same time. Um, my bishop is so depressed here. This bishop takes forever to defend or promote. Um, it still exerts a useful influence. So yeah, I think I need to defend the bishop. Oh, I could try to defend both and probably get murdered for doing it, but well, they'd have to drop a silver all the way out here. 
Are they really going to do that? Probably, but still. Uh. Yeah, I should just let the night be. And start promoting these tokens and join it with a knight to have some fun hitting this castle. Try to break the castle. Yeah, so they have a dragon. So what? I should be worried. I should be at least a little bit concerned about it. Um... I think honestly this is my best move here. They might pursue my bishop. If they do, I think I'm surviving. Um, yeah, this double token attack is very slow. Um, this is protected by the dragon. I don't understand this silver drop. I guess it breaks coordination between my generals. Oh, it's a clever peace trap. All right, so you can attack me, I can attack you. Right, so this lifts whatever peace trap might have existed. So now my bishop can take here without consequence. Um, but before I connect that punch, maybe I should put a lance up here to strike here. I don't know. Now they have generals defending everything. I still don't like this being so close to my castle. Um, Alright, so I defend and I forever trap my bishop until some critical moment where it escapes in sunshine and rainbows and all sorts of good stuff. But for now, this bishop is silenced. <laughs> they contemplate pawn takes pawn here. They think twice about it. I would think twice about that move too. It's a bit risky. I'm in check. Because my king is on a really weird square. <sighs> That's my fault. Okay. Oh, well, that's not great. Um... Wow, I just totally boxed up my king for them to attack.
40秒。Uh, this is sad. Am I going to move my front gold to the left here to try to save my king or something? I don't know. This is so bizarre of a castle that I built. Uh, if they sack the dragon for the gold, I do bishop takes. I don't get mated in one. Oh, bishop takes, I get made it in three. That is funny. Okay, we got a sense of humor here. Um, Jeez, this attack is so strong. This attack completely out of nowhere. Alright, well, how do we neutralize this? Hell if I know. Seems so unwise. So unwise. But, I mean, what can we do? If... Uh, like, I need to involve this silver in the defense of my king. And if I don't involve it, like, I just straight up get mated. So. Yeah, we take here, and then we'll use the silver to try to defend the king. And it's disgusting, but... I mean, what else can I try? So at this point, they're threatening a silver drop on the king's head. Clearly, I need to stop that threat. Um, hmm. Interesting. Well, no, I can't put the silver here, because silver takes as a free piece. So I need to defend from, like, back here. So I'm not subject to a pin. And if I didn't have this pawn on 5-5, five five, you know, maybe we could, like, put a pawn back here. But we don't have a pawn in hand, and our pawn is on 5-5, five five, so a pawn drop here is not possible. So I'll have to block with a different piece. Um, so they defend this pawn, they attack here twice um i guess i can defend there twice without too much difficulty um Alright, you can have my bishop. I've stopped caring about it. If you're that committed to trapping my bishop, it's yours. I just can't make use of it, so... Yeah, we're gonna take this, and things will be okay. Somehow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a sense that I'm going to give you my other bishop here in a moment. And I have a sense that I still won't care. Alright, we're going to stop getting mated and start attacking. Okay, does this work? Like, what is the idea behind this drop? That they want to give me two pieces for one piece is the idea. Okay. Yeah, I can take two pieces for one piece. 
Sure. All right, they successfully break up my castle. I still get, two, well, I get two pieces for one pawn. Did I read that right? I can't undo the move to see what they took, but it, it was a pawn. All right, so now we have two knights, two lances, a silver, and a pawn in hand. We can't use the pawn anywhere useful. Eventually, I'm going to put a lance on 5-2, just to try to stop some of the pain here. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, like I said, my objective here is to stop getting made it. It's not to save material. Although, every step of the way, you can see me fighting to try to save the material as I go. That's not the goal. Um, so yeah, like I said, I'm going to be offering my other bishop in a second here. Well, there it is. If you want it, it's yours. Let's see if you can figure out I'm going to have two knights and two lances. Hopefully I can plan some kind of an attack with four pieces. Um, but if not, that's on me. Okay. They exchange a gold for a silver. I guess so they can repeat this tactic. We're going to take it. And the reason we take this and allow the tactic to repeat is because we need a gold to defend our king. Mm -hmm. Not even attacking from the front. That's... Okay, well, this is just a free piece. Um, there's nothing interesting about it. I mean, theoretically, there could be some novel weakness here, but the bishop and the gold defend each other. So, yeah, now that we've... We've traded two for one, two for one, etc. We've finally reduced this attack through this silver blunder. Um, and so they need, if they have four pieces attacking, the attack will never run out. My guess is that they can't find a way to get four pieces attacking at this time. So my guess is that their attack does run out. And I can finally focus on trying to attack against, like, this is a really solid shape, but I have overwhelming force, so all I have to find is any possible checkmate. I wish I could find a, a really simple mate against this, but it's just a really strong shape, it really is. Even with this tremendous material advantage, what can I do? Um, yeah, so this allows them to get another horse. Um, I think that's fine. I have a gold general in hand, so I am safe.
We're just going to play this so we never get mated by this bishop. It's overly cautious, but there it is. So, yeah, this promoted bishop and any counterpart that might join it on uh, 3 1, this gold defense against all of it. This is the anchor that my castle badly requires at this time. <sighs> requires is the wrong word, but come on. Like, maybe there's some faster way that I could, or lighter way I could defend this. But this looks like the easiest defense. Since I can just take here. Um... They have a silver in hand. So what now? I don't want that silver anywhere near my castle. Um, All right, we're just going to provide another anchor to really lock this down. I don't want any surprises at this time. All right, thanks for the game. Yeah, I mean, if... I hope that it's some kind of res some sign of respect that even at the end position I'm still defending. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I just kept defending, defending, defending. I couldn't find any obvious break in it because it's a really solid shape it really is um so yeah i hope it's some kind of respect that like even here i'm taking time to defend and not f this up I guess there's some way, like, if I bring a bishop out here and try to attack, well, I'm not sure. If I had more than one bishop, sure, there might be easy paths in, but um, I'm not sure how to actually destroy Mino Castle. It seems hard. The thematic thing to do would be put a bishop on the 5-5 five five and a knight here, and it's just not practical. Yeah. Yeah. So, something like this, yes. I guess I just need to brute force it. Something like that. It's not super easy how to break this down. Uh, sure. So I guess, again, they're in control of the analysis. Uh, to whatever extent we choose to analyze whatever parts of the game, or they don't want to, that's fine too. Um. <laughs> yeah.
still learning is definitely a euphemism here for um this is i mean when i first started playing the game i played static rook and then for the next year or so i've just never played it and here we are playing it again um yeah so i think that silver did need to move yeah It's true there is this Odashino strategy, but I don't think it works against Ranging Rook. Or at least I've not seen it work here, but maybe it does. But either way, I'm just not familiar. Um, yeah, I guess here, because this is just much too slow, they've already put the Rook on the fourth file. Um, they could push this pawn up one to stop the Silver from advancing diagonally. So, I know it's something I spent some time trying to figure out how to refute Nyrox's uh, Urshino opening. Couldn't find a concrete refutation, but preventing the silver from moving out um, would be effective, but um, requires some special cooperation. Yeah. Yeah, that's logical to think that I'm attacking. Definitely, I could have considered um, attacking somehow. I guess I had two thoughts. One, that I wasn't totally sure what I was doing, and two, I was curious what my opponent might do if I just left them to their own resources. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, they could play Opposing Rook here. Yeah, maybe that actually works quite well. I'm not really sure what the timing is on that particular idea, but um, no, that's definitely an idea. So, yeah, I mean, had they played that here... Um, The tricky part is you have to be able to put up with sustained pressure on that side of the board. Um, uh, so where I'm actually dropping this back, uh, this thing.
Yeah, I'm not entirely sure, but to me it looks like strategically I'm better off here with the rook on that file. Um, because my bishop and silver are already lined up for a very quick attack in this direction. Um... Yeah, it's funny I played pawn 6-5. Did I? Where? Oh. Um. Wait, that's not my move. That's their move. What was my last? I played pawn 9-4. Hmm. Maybe I should just do this directly. Uh, yeah, I mean, even here, right? We just, I just mow down the pawns. Um, hmm. Interesting. I mean, this is the first time I've tried playing this Urashino strategy for myself. So there could definitely be stuff I don't know about it. Um, so oh. Okay. Um mm, I'm not sure. I'm so close to having some very good moves, but not quite. I guess we have to try this. So, like, the yeah, they've successfully shut out my bishop for a while, and my rook for a while. Um, but I try to find a way to hit their bishop as soon as I can. Um, just to hit it right here, right? Um... It's curious. Uh, this position is so fragile. Um, hmm. I wonder if this tactic wins peace. It's close. It's not close enough, is it? It's so close. All right, do your worst. <laughs> it's not mating one. Yeah. It's sharp, but I don't think this quite works. I don't think there's any variation where this quite makes the mark. I mean, yeah, maybe just directly threatening to advance the rook might be stronger. I don't know. But this seems strong enough. Hmm. It 
it's kind of amazing when pieces just happen to be on the right scores at the right time for something to work out. But yeah, in this particular variation, the silver got pinned to the rook. Um, so, and it got pincered between these two pawns. Which had me start to think, well, if it's pincered, if it can't retreat, can I, like, win it somehow? Uh, I think I'm just simply up a silver. Um, yeah. So, So, if you could somehow get four attackers over there, that would be very strong, but I don't think there's a way he can manage an attack here. Uh... threatening stuff like this. Can be important to uh, defend against stuff. Oh, I forgot to include Stay Healthy Bot in the list of bots that um, my translation bot should ignore. It's now the uh, Have Water Every Two Hours message is translated by our translator bot. It's a bit much. <laughs> I'm aiming in the wrong direction here. This is where my actual attack is, isn't it? Yeah, that looks like the actual threat. Um... Yeah. <sighs> I forget if Nyrock is playing in Tourney to Master or not. Um, but if he is, I probably need to figure out some good way to play against it. So I don't, like... So we can have a good game with him. <laughs> uh... 
Um, so yeah, this is to say that, um, how far back do we go? Um, yeah, I'm not seeing anything special there either. This stuff about me pushing these pawns um, may or may not be sound, but I think it's doable. Um. But yeah, if I can actually do that, then um... That seems kind of hard to defend, to be honest. I'm not sure what to do. Um, so... Yeah, I guess if they take this vanguard pawn on the sixth file trying to prevent me from using my bishop and silver, um, I could put pressure elsewhere here. Like, your plan was to bring this up. Um, yeah, I think I'm forced to push this. Um, thankfully, the timing works out. But yeah, otherwise, like, they will have successfully opened the position and managed to activate the rook and bishop before I finish castling. So I think here I'm forced to break things up this way before they have the chance to advance the silver. Um, yeah. It's difficult here because, like, I would have the same reaction that I'd want to open the fourth file right now. Like, clearly this opens the diagonal for the bishop, opens the file for the rook. What could possibly be wrong with it? Well, the fact that I've played this Urashino thing or something quite like it. So it's difficult for them to, um, I don't know. It's difficult to do these natural moves, given the pressure that I've got. Um,
Yeah, just pushing my edge pawn to see, like, uh, what are you planning? I don't know, what are you planning? I don't know, what are you planning? We could go back and forth all day on this. Um... So either pick a different castle, like expand Mino into something greater, or find some way to attack somehow. But it looks hard. Yeah, Shogi's a complex game. Sorry my commentary has been tremendously slow here. Unlike the first game, this time I'm trying to figure out like what it is that I even missed. Um, the first game was kind of clear because I have some experience recently with other strategies. Um, like third file rook and central file rook and that sort of thing. I was able to build on our recent um, games. Here, this is me playing Static Rook, which I seldom do. So, yeah. Uh, this got confusing. Um, yeah, that makes sense. That potentially they could play any of this. Any or all of the above. I guess that's typical fourth file Rook strategy. Is, um just claiming a little bit more space and being prepared to react to whatever Gota does. Yeah. Yeah. Instead, we got the sharp tactical thing with some dancing rooks and other dancing pieces, and just didn't quite tactically work out for them. But maybe we both missed a shot somewhere. All right. Uh, yeah. Cool. That's entirely fair. All right, cool. Uh, cool. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, things do happen sometimes, so it's good to find opponents who are really polite about it. Well, I hope they do enjoy their dinner. Um, so now I've got control, I can drive the analysis a little bit further. So we saw in the game, like, I transitioned castles and then after, well, okay, I transitioned, then they played this immediately, which I maybe could have foreseen. But what this means is if pieces get exchanged, my king is a sitting duck. There's really no solution, or no quick and dirty solution to this, other than try to avoid trading lots of pieces. So they did this, they forced some peace trades, and... I'm not totally sure how I should react to this. I thought this pawn push was reasonable. Possibly I should just do this straight away. But I think what I did was fine too. Or rather, moving up the rook can't be a mistake. Unless moving it sideways or somewhere else is just tremendously better. But I don't see that being the case. So yeah, this is one option, but I think what I did was fine. Um, so the thing to note is this, is this seems fine because their knight can't force my rook to move again. Even if the rook had to move, it has a decent escape square just to the left. 
So they threaten to promote their rook, and we call their bluff, um, and we fork their pieces. So yeah, this fork might have been greedy. This fork might have been extremely, extremely greedy. Um, I was trying to prevent them from promoting. Oh, that's right. That's why I did this. To force them to do something if they really wanted to promote. I hadn't looked at this closely enough. So if we do this... During the game, I was satisfied with what I found in the other line. But this seems convincing. This seems quite good. So... This solves the problem of um, the silver not knowing what to do. Yeah, why didn't I just do this? I mean, why don't I just find all the right moves the first time and never have to rethink things? But also, maybe my rook advancing... Wait, did I advance it? No, I moved it to the side. Hmm. I'm not sure about a lot of things here. So a lot of pieces get exchanged just at the moment where we didn't want that to happen. Um, hmm. What's this rook move do? Does this rook move do anything? Oh, it gets the rook out of threat. Why did I threaten the rook? So I could get a pawn in hand. Um, there's got to be somewhere in this infinite regress to hell that I can actually start to calm this down and try to make sense of it. Hmm. Is this all a really fancy way of saying? Hmm. Like, perhaps the right answer was to sacrifice a pawn earlier? Like, what if I do this? And they have two options. They can take trapping their bishop. Giving me more time to castle. Or they could take with the bishop, and I could sack my rook for the bishop and then promote right away. Um, yeah. This looks more interesting. So this gives up a pawn, but gives me time to, like, complete whatever castle stuff I'm doing. Um, if I am indeed doing something there, or maybe I'm not. I don't know. I'm so materialistic. But did I have better earlier? So maybe this is a fancy way of saying I should have done this first. Even with their rook on the same file. No, they just push. This is not smart. So it depends on their rook not being there. Um, yeah, when they lift this, how should I react? Uh, during the game, I had this idea. That, like, this is possible. This might even be reasonable, but somehow I thought that with this blocking my rook, somehow that strengthens this idea. Um, so they have four pieces attacking the square. I have three defending it. Well, enough. Pawn up. Pawn takes. Lance takes. Lance takes. Bishop takes. Silver takes. Rook takes. So I seem to be okay there. Um... 
I would like to defend my king after making my king tremendously vulnerable here. So the timing of all this is very wrong. Hmm. So what did I do? Yeah, so when they play this, I should be panicking just a bit. Because I've done nothing to help my king. Instead, something like this might be appropriate. And just, I don't know. Even if I'm going to build this, give myself a little time to get it built. Even if it ends up being very much the wrong idea here. I mean, what could the right idea possibly be? I don't know. Maybe this is the right idea. There's an appeal to this that then this silver can connect with uh, this bishop. So there's some appeal to that, but the downside is that the silver eventually could get exploited somehow. So this adds some weaknesses to my shape. But there's no other good way to make use of the silver. So, yeah, it's hard. I mean, another thing I considered was, do I push here? And I don't think this is... Maybe this is better than I thought. But during the game, I was looking at this and this. And then what? Then we go back, I guess. Which doesn't seem very enterprising. So, oh, instead of castling, or instead of breaking my castle, maybe I push here. Asking, what are they really up to? They take, I offer a pawn trade, and see what they want to do. Um, that could be interesting. I'm not sure how successful this would be. Yeah, this doesn't look that great. I have no idea. I'll have to figure it out sometime. I, I just can't figure it out. Anyway, the way the game proceeded, some weird exchanges occurred. Um... Yeah, they spotted this attacking my bishop. Um, I could have reacted by taking this, right? So this way they would probably take here. And yeah, then this happens. So they get a bishop. And don't know how I take back. All my stuff is loose. Yeah, this can't be right. It's not this then. Um, yeah, that's actually complicated. Another possibility is this capture. And again, they're attacking all my stuff, and my rook's not promoting. I could take the knight, but why? Uh, but they do get to promote a bishop, but I have the rook. So maybe if somehow my rook promotes, this is okay. But I don't see how my rook promotes. Also, my silver is loose, and my castle is loose. So yeah, just me advancing my king was really boneheaded. I didn't expect this attack to pick up so much steam. Uh, yeah, advancing the knight was suicidal because they have a rook drop in the corner. Our analysis never got that far because we just analyzed very slowly. But um, yeah, no, this um, it was not so great because this corner drop is really painful.
But they played this fork instead, and we survive to fight another day. This promotion's probably too slow. Um, I have no idea what to do here. They played very well. They played very well here. I couldn't find any fault with this castle. There's clearly some very obvious faults in my castle. So it's... Yeah, I don't... This looks very hard for me to defend. Even if they play... Um, I mean, there's perhaps better ways to break the castle than from this side. But anyway, they, they're clearly aiming at obvious targets, which seems like a reasonable policy. I was trying to activate my bishop, and instead I activated their pieces. And this knight and silver seem very strong together, so... I was concerned about a knight drop trapping my bishop. And it does. Um... But later on, I had to sacrifice my bishop anyway. So, yeah, this 5-5 five, five push to try to save my bishop didn't help me at all. Um, yeah, it's hard to suggest anything, because my pieces are just sad. I mean, what do you do about sad? I don't know. But yeah, we kept we kept blocking this rook over and over. Finally, I decide I can't save this bishop. Maybe I got impatient here cuz I'm actually close to saving it. Um my king is vulnerable, but there should be some way to remove the knight eventually. Uh another thought is this here. And I guess the reason I didn't do this is because I was concerned about this counterattack. And didn't know what to do about that. Or it seems like I've just given them a free move. And looking at it now, it still feels the same way. Um, yeah, so I don't have a way to evict this silver that's cleverly moved up the board. Um, I guess the best I could do is just bring this back and pretend like I'm not hanging my bishop. I don't know, but yeah, sacking the bishop might be fine. Not just to let off steam, but in the sense that it might be the best move. Um, this is actually just... Hmm... There's no need for me to complicate this. This is a free tempo. Because unless they can, like, drop another piece even heavier, like, even with stronger effect, I would expect that whatever they might put on the square, um, it's not going to be that effective. I guess, yeah, we're looking specifically at this. Oh, but then I can just run away again. So, yeah, now this looks like a free everything. Um, yeah, I forgot. Like, there's no way that he can checkmate me immediately here. He's got some threats, but unless he can remove both of these pieces... I'm sorry, unless he can remove one of these pieces and then drop the other one here. Or however he does not He can't drop a general here mate um, while I still have two pieces on this line. And if he takes either one of these with the dragon, I take back. And yeah. I still have a piece defending. So, I think my king is safer than I assumed it was. But I played this overly cautious defensive style that was unmerited. Yeah, and then we took the free silver and exchanged the bishop for the dragon. 
took the free bishop, but then they get a silver force. It's not really free. And then finally evict this force. And the notion is that once this runs away, um, I don't know if I take a moment to defend my gold or not, but uh, I've got a lot of material. They don't. So like if I play a nice cautious move like this, I should be a safe. There's no checkmate. They can't get a knight in hand. There's no surprises here. And eventually, somehow, we'll prevail. Uh, I still don't see a weakness in the castle. So they built a good, solid castle. I built something that was not so solid, but it sufficed in this game. I just had to take all the pieces. But, uh, yeah, in general, I would recommend um, building a strong castle. Even if that's not what I happen to do, I'd still recommend people to try to do that. Um, and I'll see if I can eventually learn and follow my own advice as I become more and more familiar with more opening and middle game and other strategies. So yeah, hopefully this has been fun. Thanks for watching.